Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for Minitab. This screencast gives you some advice on judging if your data is normally distributed and includes section 8.4, how to check whether your data have a normal distribution using the chi-squared goodness of fit test. If your data is normally distributed, then you can use a set of tests called parametric tests that are more powerful in discriminating significant from non-significant results. This is because the equation expects your data to conform to a pattern called the Gaussian or normal distribution and so can make more accurate predictions. Thus, researchers often like to do tests to determine if the data is normal and we will outline some in this screencast. But please note that absolute justification that a small data set is normally distributed is almost impossible to do. One common approach can be illustrated using the data from table 8.3 shown in the bar chart. We can calculate a mean and standard deviation from this data and then predict the distribution of values we should get if the data is normal, as we can see from the underlaid bar chart in pink. We can then perform a chi-squared or similar test to see if our values are consistent with those expected values. This generates a probability and if it is below 0.05, we can state the observed and expected data are significantly different and that our data is not normal. How to do this chi-squared test is detailed in the book. However, many programs have several other tests to determine if your distribution could be normal. And in this screencast, we will outline the use of the Shapiro-Wilk test, which is the most accurate test for small sample sizes. Again, a significant result indicates that your data is not normally distributed. This is an important consideration with these tests. They tell you if your data is not normal. What they do not do is tell you that your data is normal. What if the p-value was just above 0.05? The result would be non-significant, but could we really state the data was normally distributed with any certainty? Fortunately, there are a couple of other indicators we can assess. Normal data sets are symmetrical, so we can look at the skew value, which should be zero for a perfectly symmetrical data set. This is also why we find the mean and median are the same in normally distributed data. In general, a skew value between minus 2 and 2 can be consistent with a normal distribution. We can also calculate a kurtosis value. In a normally distributed data set, the data tails off from the central position in a defined way. The kurtosis value can indicate if your data tails off too quickly or slowly. A kurtosis value between minus 2 and 2 can be consistent with a normally distributed data set. Using these three measures, we can at least give some justification for using a parametric test to analyse our data with, even if we cannot state with absolute certainty that our data set is normally distributed. I have entered the data from table 5.8 into Minitab. This data consists of the body length of 50 ladybirds of the species Adala bipunctata. The question is whether this data can be considered to be normally distributed. To do this test, we track up to STAT and click. We go down to basic statistics in the submenu that appears and track across and down to normality test in the submenu that appears and click. In the window that opens, we need to tell it which variable we want it to analyse. In this case, it's variable C1. I'm going to select it and enter it into the variable box by pressing the select button. We now need to choose the test. Minitab doesn't do the superior wilt test, but it does do the Ryan Joyner test, which is similar. I'm going to select it by clicking the radio button. We run the test by clicking OK. Minitab's main output is a plot, and this can be useful for judging the normality of the data by eye. But this is outside the focus of this screencast. In the smaller box to the right, we are given the p-value from the Ryan Joyner test, which is greater than 0.1. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A p-value greater than 0.1 is above our 0.05 transition probability, indicating that we cannot reject the null hypothesis and that there is not a significant difference between the distribution of our data and that expected from the data if it was normally distributed. However, this p-value is a long way from a value of 1, which would indicate a perfect correlation between the observed and expected values. And although I would never expect my data to be perfect, I would like more evidence on which to base my conclusion. 
One thing we could do is check the skewness and kurtosis values and to see if our median and mean are similar. To do that we track up to stat and click down to basic statistics and then across to display descriptive statistics in the submenu that appears and click. A window appears. I need to tell Minitab which variable we want to analyse. I'm going to click in the variable box, select C1 body length and place it in the variable box by pressing select. Now I need to tell Minitab which descriptive statistics I want it to display. I do this by pressing on the statistics button and selecting kurtosis skewness, mean and median. I now press OK. I now run the test by pressing OK in the test window. Minitab has given us a kurtosis value of minus 0 0.29 which is close to 0 and within our minus 2 to 2 guide range suggesting that our data tails off appropriately. The skewness value is minus 0 0.05 even closer to 0 and within the minus 2 to 2 guide range and suggests the data is relatively symmetrical, something confirmed by the mean and median values being very similar at 5.08 and 5.00 respectively. Taken altogether, I feel that I can make justification for my data being normally distributed and that it would be appropriate to use parametric tests for further analysis. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.